Hello, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, then my name is Jess. We talk about all things fashion, styling, keeping your wardrobe refreshed, timeless, capsule, vlogs, travel, you name it. There's a bit of everything on this channel, and hopefully if you like this video, you'll like the rest of my videos, so don't forget to subscribe if you do. Today's video I thought would be quite a good one because I'm seeing countless videos of 2024 trends, trends to invest in for this season, different bits and pieces floating around. So I thought this was a great opportunity to share with you a few different trends that I have bought over time that I consider to be really timeless, ones that just keep coming back around and things that you could easily get and you know bring back a bit of lease of life to your wardrobe. So throughout this video I'm going to be linking everything down below where possible, although like I said these are things that I've invested in over a few few years so they're not always brand new and available however I will link as similar as possible although I do advise checking websites like Vinted and Depop because there is always 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 bargains to be had on there and I actually don't know if anything in this video is from Vinted or any oh no there is a couple of secondhand bits in here so throughout the video I'm just going to talk you through everything I'll pop some pictures up on the screen videos if I've got them and just really kind of talk you through the evolution of style and trends and the different bits and pieces that I've invested in over time that have been quite timeless to me. So without further ado, we're gonna jump straight in. I'm gonna put down my little coffee because I can't hold things and talk. Now, these are gonna be in no particular order, so don't make note of what comes first or last, but the first one I wanted to talk about is leather. Now, leather is a trend which has been flitting in and out of our eye line for quite a while now we've had periods of time where leather leggings were really big then it's been like wider leg trousers we've had leather blazers we've had leather jackets there's been a bit of everything and it's one that just keeps coming back every autumn winter and to be honest i wear mine through those three seasons including spring the only time i don't really tend to get it out as much is summer although i do still wear my leather jacket on slightly colder days with like a t-shirt and shorts or something if you want to check out any of the styling guaranteed there's probably a ways to style so i will leave any that are relevant to things that i've mentioned down below because i do them every week but leather is just one that i consider to be a timeless trend that keeps coming back i do think sometimes the way that we wear it is going to change so for example like i really liked leather leggings a few years ago whereas now i prefer a wider leg trouser i still have my leather leggings but sometimes when style ebbs and flows it's nice to keep those pieces or you know just replace it with something that you think is a bit more relevant to your style at that moment i know some people maybe really liked the leather blazer trend now they don't really find it suits them they prefer an aviator vibe completely up to you so i'm going to share with you a couple of my favorites first and foremost we have leather jackets now i have two leather actually no that's a lie I have four leather jackets and the reason I have four is because they are all completely different. So the first one that I've got is my classic aviator style. This is a really easy, timeless jacket. This specific one is from Worst Behaviour. I got it a few years ago. It's not available anywhere online anymore. However, I do really recommend checking places like Vinted if you want a bit of a bargain. I think leather ages really well as long as you look after it. So you can get some really good deals on there. I also have this one, which I actually did pick up on Vinted. This is an old motorbike jacket that was really loved and worn and it just it's one of those jackets that you can tell it's had a lifetime before and I got it for I think about 20 pounds maybe 12 I can't remember but it wasn't expensive I looked up the brand and these retail brand new at about 280 pounds so absolute steal I do just need to get the sleeves altered because it's a men's 2xl I was very impatient saw the bargain and just couldn't resist so highly recommend just having a little browse because charity shops and vintage and stuff do always have great options although I will leave some links down below to leather jackets if you wanted to buy one new then I have a faux leather jacket which I equally love this one is from nasty gal it's a bit more of a I feel like it's a good in between if I don't want to wear an aviator but I don't want to wear a blazer it's like a mid slightly smarter looking leather jacket and then finally i have this one which is again genuine leather from h&m a few years ago this is gorgeous it's a quilted number i really like the oversized structure of this one i do find it slightly harder to style but i do really like it and i think it's going to be in my wardrobe for a very very long time and then along those lines i also have things like these so i've got a leather blazer which i've had for honestly about four years now from zara this is a great one if you are in autumn and you just want a really light layer or alternatively if you're heading out of an evening and you want something like i said a light layer that just adds a bit to an outfit so i sometimes wear this with like an all black roll neck jeans some smart boot heels or something and it looks really nice but i've had this for so long and i don't think i'll ever part with it it's just it's one of those things that I think is just such a classic and I've styled this and worn this in 7,000 million different ways and for the fact that it cost me about £50, I think it's such a steal to add into a wardrobe. I don't necessarily think it's going to be a trend that comes back every single year, 
but I do think they're going to ebb and flow like I said and I think style is kind of what you make it. I'm not really someone who buys into trends too often. I will only buy into a trend if I think it'll already go with my wardrobe. So that for example fit really nicely at the time. It still comes out every now and then and I do still really love it. Doesn't get worn as much at the moment but I know in some years it's going to get more, some years less etc. It's just a good one to have in the archive. And then as I've already mentioned we've got leather trousers. So these are from Abercrombie and Fitch. I think Honestly, this is going to be personal preference again. Leather as a trend, like overall, there's so many different ways to have it. I think it's great to add into a wardrobe in whatever way suits you. And if you are looking to get leather trousers, I just think they're a great alternative sometimes to jeans because jeans are great and I love them and I wear them all the time. But I think sometimes it's quite nice to have something a little bit different that adds a little bit of interest to an outfit, looks quite different to styling with jeans. And honestly, they're just great. There's a million different styles and colors, like I've said in various parts of this video already. So I think it's just what you make it. You might prefer a slim leg, you might prefer a flare, you might prefer a wide leg, you might prefer a low rise, whatever it is and however the trends work for you. I just think leather is something that is always going to be in our lives and is always going to be a really gorgeous trend to invest into. The next trend is satin skirts and I was for the longest time really against satin skirts. I just didn't really like them. I didn't think they looked right on me. And I think it's just because I never found the perfect ones. So I know for me, I really like ones with a really narrow waistband that kind of hang like a slip skirt and are quite long. I don't really like ones that are midi or anything because it cuts me at a really awkward point of my leg. I'm also quite short. So for me, maxis are the absolute way to go. Now I have two that I bought for retail price a couple of years ago from Topshop. They are stunning. And then I also have one that I picked up on Vinted for five pounds, which I'm assuming she got from a charity shop and sold on, which is fine by me, I don't care. But um, it's a really nice similar shape and length. Now, I don't by any means think you have to have multiple colors or anything like that. However, for me and my style, I find that when I really like something, I'll get it in a few different colours so that I can wear the same outfits but in different colours so it looks like a different outfit if that makes sense. So one of my favourites is this khaki number. We're going to ignore how creased they are, they've been in the drawer but I really like this one styled with different jumpers and I also have worn them with waistcoats, with t-shirts, you can dress them up, dress them down. I'm going to have a styling video coming for these very very soon to keep your eyes peeled. This is the one that I got from Vinted. It's double lined. Again, very similar style. The only thing is this one's obviously slightly thicker. And then we have my cream one, which is my most worn. This just looks really great with pretty much everything. And honestly, when I tell you, I did not want to invest in this trend for such a long time. I just, I couldn't get on board. I kept buying them, returning them, trying them on. I just, I didn't love the trend and as soon as I found the right skirts they are honestly such a staple I wear them year round with different outfit options and I just absolutely love them I think they're so so fab so I highly recommend having a little look obviously all of these trends aren't for everyone you might hate a satin skirt you might maybe really like a printed one whereas I like plain Again, make from this what you will. The next trend I wanna talk about is double denim. Now we all know the iconic Britney and Justin back in the day with their gorgeous double denim looks like this, but double denim is just an absolute classic and when it's done right, it looks so good. And I think there's so many ways that you can wear double denim as a whole, but you can also wear the upper like denim shirts and stuff different ways too. And I really like clashing denim a lot. So sometimes I wear blue and white denim or you know, white and black. There's many ways you can do it and I think having really good quality blue denim in your wardrobe is an essential, whether that's jeans, tops, whatever. So double denim for me and denim in particular is just a staple. It's pretty much the only colour that I have in my wardrobe apart from the earthy green tones. Like I am such a neutral black, white, grey kind of gal. So I've got three different pieces here that I wanted to show you for really good easy ways to incorporate denim upper pieces like tops and stuff into your wardrobe nicely that aren't just a denim jacket. So first up we have a Levi's denim shirt. Now this is a men's one. It's a light wash. It matches some of my jeans perfectly. And I just think obviously find the right color denim for you. First and foremost, that's really important because you might like a lighter denim. You might like a darker denim. Maybe you're a strict black denim kind of gal. But I think when you invest in a really nice denim shirt, these are just so fab because not only can they be worn open with like a t-shirt and maybe some tailored trousers or something, but you can style them really nicely as double denim, with white denim, with black denim, with blue denim, like there's just many styling options. 
and I don't think you can ever have too many shirts in your wardrobe. A white shirt is a classic, same with a black shirt. I have a black satin and a white cotton, and then this one just slots in really nicely. Then I thought, let me pop this one in, because this is a bit of an interest one, and I am obsessed with this shirt. It's not available anymore, because I've had it for about four years now from Naked, but it's so stunning. This is a quite a good way to add a little bit of interest to double denim, like I was saying. So you could do the classic, which is just a shirt and jeans, or you could have something like this where it's a little bit of a different shirt. So very boxy fit, short sleeved. I love wearing this with matching like dark denim and some Birkenstocks or something. It looks so good when it gets to summer, especially if I'm wearing like shorts or whatever. Um, but equally I wear this open over tailored trousers and like a little black top or something. Really, really cute. So just wanted to show you that as kind of like a an interest piece to show you that double denim doesn't have to be a shirt and trousers and then the last piece of denim I wanted to show you leads on really nicely to the next trend and it's just this little number that I picked up last year from River Island now I have worn this in so many different ways and originally I saw it and thought absolutely love it think it's gorgeous I'm gonna challenge myself to style this in a few different ways and honestly it's been so fun so I've worn this with blue denim jeans I've worn it with the white satin skirt I've worn it with um tailored trousers and like a long sleeve white roll neck underneath like this so many different ways and it looks gorgeous in every single way like it just is so iconic and i absolutely love it now this is a really good option like i said for multiple stylings but again for just wearing denim slightly differently because denim is a trend that is going to be around forever this is a really good option i think even this over like a little t-shirt with some beige trousers or something could look really cool there's just so many different ways I'd style this, which leads me nicely onto the next trend that I think is timeless, which is waistcoats. Now, I distinctly remember about two years ago, sitting with my best friend, clearing out her wardrobe, and she had a black waistcoat, and she was like, I'm gonna put this on Vinted, I really don't want it. And I remember thinking, who in their right mind is gonna buy a waistcoat? Like, are you crazy? That's never gonna sell, like, hard no. And it was like one of those classic black waistcoats that she'd had from working in catering as a teenager or something. And lo and behold, it was the first thing that sold. And then very, very quickly after the fact, waistcoats were everywhere and we now laugh about it because it's just so ridiculous that we thought that wouldn't sell and now it's a trend that we all own. So I have three waistcoats. I have the denim one, which is more of my like everyday, but I can dress it up if I want to. And then I have these two, which are identical. Now, initially I did get into the waistcoat trend because I saw them being styled with satin skirts fell in love and thought that is just such a gorgeous way to wear a waistcoat. I didn't really think they suited me at first until I found the right style. So again, I really recommend having a browse and finding what works for you. If you've got bigger boobs, maybe you need something a bit different or you want a really tiny waist, maybe you want a longer one. There's dozens of options around, but these are both identical. They're just different colors from um, ASOS. Now, I wear these in a million different ways and I think they are something that is just gonna be around for a really long time. So styling them over a t-shirt, like I've already mentioned, I've styled this one and this one to be fair with matching colored tailored trousers and some heels. I've worn them with satin skirts, I've worn them with jeans. I've just, there's many, many ways I've worn them and styled them and I just think they always look great. And for a trend that initially, no one really, I think it took a bit of a slow burn to get to, but as soon as it was on the scene, I feel like it's everywhere and it just is a really great styling option, especially if you are someone who has limited space for a wardrobe, but you need things that you can wear to the office and also wear out and about. I personally think I would wear those in an office with tailored trousers any day of the week when it's a bit colder, you can chuck a, like a long sleeve or a roll neck underneath and they just are definitely something that you could dress up for work wear dress up for everyday evenings or dress down into everyday life. Next up, we have an item which I would consider to be my favorite piece in my entire wardrobe, and it's currently at the dry cleaners because public service announcement, now is the time to get your trench coats to the dry cleaners so that they're fresh and ready to go for the new season. Now I am always the worst at doing this. I always forget, I get round to spring, I start wearing it and think, oh, this looks a bit grubby, I need to take it in because I get like, you know, the marks on the edge or you get a bit of mud splattered up the back. And I remembered this year and I took it in and it's 15 pounds at the one I went to. They probably vary slightly everywhere you go, but it was 15 pounds. They're sewing the buttons back on for me. It's just gonna come back in great condition and I highly recommend doing it because cleaning your coats yourself is impossible for one. But for two, it's really nice to just give them like a big revamp every season. So across the next few months, I think I'm just going to take all of my coats in piece by piece and just get them cleaned and freshened up because there's nothing nicer than having really clean coats. Now, 
trench coats are an essential i wear them all the time i've styled them a million different ways and my trench coat actually came from burberry and i picked it up on portobello road i went into a shop she had one that was like the most beautiful thing ever and i literally put the money down there and then and it cost me i think about 300 pounds i will leave my video to how i find and source vintage designer because I did one a while ago and I've become really good at finding vintage designer pieces but this trench coat is like an extension of my personality and I really really love it I just wear it all the time it's such a classic it's just one of those coats where it's, it's just an essential like I don't know how anyone could last without a trench coat and I'm so glad that 10 years or whatever it was they came back into fashion and we haven't stopped wearing them since. Now, I have my Burberry one, like I said. I also have an Aquascutum one, which I managed to source on Vinted for £50. That one is also gorgeous. It's just a black, slightly shorter one. And I have a green one that I picked up on the high street as well, which is equally great quality. But I do think it's sometimes for things like trench coats, it's really worth investing. Although there are some really great options on the high street too, and secondhand, depending on how you buy them. But she's a beauty look at her we just love her she's beautiful then speaking of designer and secondhand pieces monogrammed designer i think is one of those trends that has been around since the 90s and it's on its way back and if you don't know what i mean by that i mean the classic monogram prints like this now this gucci bag is another story of mine that i absolutely love this is one of the first vintage designer pieces i ever found i got this on ebay for 120 pounds with the receipt to prove its authenticity this bag is on Vestiaire for about a thousand pounds and is just a classic. It's from roughly, I think it was like 2003 or 2006 or something. I looked it up before. Um, and it's just a really nice classic shoulder style. I wear it 24 seven. It's one of my most used bags and it's just a classic. I think this kind of style is definitely coming back, especially with everyone loving like the Louis Vuitton prints, the coach prints. Like there's just so many bags that are doing the monograms at the moment. And I think they're a gorgeous way to I mean, it kind of does flaunt designer a little bit, but I just think it's quite a nice way to add a bit of print to an outfit, a bit of interest, and they're just absolutely stunning. But again, highly recommend checking out Vintage Designer because Vintage Designer, you can get some absolute bargains. They're really high quality because they hold the quality, obviously they're really well made, um, and they're just beautiful bags. Although if you did want to get one, the High Street has so many options that are similar. I just really recommend checking out secondhand because you can find some absolute gems if you want to know about authenticity like i said check out my old video for how i source vintage designer but i would really advise if you find something just have a little look on google at whatever brand it is and say like i don't know gucci bag how to authenticate a gucci bag and it will tell you the things to look out for even down to like burberry bags like the way the horse goes the writing changed in like the 80s and stuff so it's really worth just having a look on google because you can really easily authenticate a bag if someone doesn't have a receipt because a lot of people don't have them anymore the next thing is a little bit of a marmite you're either going to love it or you're gonna hate it and that is metallic accessories now metallic accessories to me are a really good one for party season for date nights for summer in the evenings basically your kind of evening party wear festive vibes now i've had some of these in my wardrobe for a long time i've got bags with sparkles on them i've got a silver bag that i use all the time but for the sake of this video but for the sake of this video i thought i would show you these silver heels because not only are they a classic style shoe they're just like a low sling back but they're a really great one for just styling with so many outfits year round and i think this kind of thing you can i mean i have the black version of these but these are a really great way to have something that is super classic in style but just adds a little bit of a something you know so i could wear an all black outfit with my leather um leather jacket and a pair of these i could wear my black satin skirt with a waistcoat with these like there's so many different styling options but i just think they add a little bit of something but metallic accessories i think are going to be around for a long time we've been loving the silver trousers for the last couple of years and i think things like this are just going to be around for a while i think we might have ebbs and flows in the colors so i think sometimes it'll be the silvers sometimes it'll be the golds but i really do think they're going to be around for a while even if they dip in and out for a couple of years i just think they're a really good investment to make a trend that has recently graced our screens again i feel like it's suddenly everywhere it's one that i've always loved and invested into and that is leopard print now leopard print to me is a really classic print i know it's had a bad rep in the past with the pat butcher vibes but i think it's a classic print that is going to be around for a while if you're not too keen on investing too heavily in it i would recommend maybe going for things like scarves however if you want to get something that is a good high quality piece in a classic print i recommend things like outerwear so i have this gorgeous damson madagile i know it's not for everyone i personally love it and i wear it a lot i have this kind of 
giant chunky scarf. I've had this scarf since probably 2015, 2016, maybe 2017. So quite a while now, nearly 10 years. I wear this a lot. Now every season this comes out, it's giant, it's chunky, it's cosy, it's very subtle. I feel like that's a good way to add a leopard print in without making it too like in your face. However, leopard print jeans are a really good option. I love those. You can get leopard print skirts. I don't really like the leopard print top kind of vibe, but I think if you're adding it in accessories, in denims or in coats, absolutely fabulous. So this coat I actually got this season and I really love it. This is one that's gonna be around for a long time for me. And it's just from Balzac and it's just a really gorgeous, leopard print coat that's like a fleecy vibe again another trend that we're all loving the teddy fleeces they've been around for years in different ways we've had the long teddy jackets the big oversized we've had the fleecy vibe it's just a trend that's going to keep on giving and i think this is gorgeous it is on the higher price point because balzac is one of those brands that is just a little bit more expensive but i think you could probably find similar stuff to this second hand or on the high street um but if you wanted this one i'll leave this linked as well it's just super cozy it's got navy on the inside which i kind of love and then it's just nice and snug and cozy i've worn this to death this year i only got it in maybe like december maybe november i think it was december and i've worn it so much since i think in every single vlog i've worn it at least once if you've seen me out and about but it's really really gorgeous and i think leopard print like i said is just one of those trends it comes for a couple of years it disappears for a couple of years comes back and i think for people like me i wear it all the time but if you are a bit more on the trend following guide that's totally fine we're all about that we love just doing whatever works for you but i think leopard print is definitely one to invest in even if it's just a scarf it's a really good one to keep going in your wardrobe and then last but not least we have high quality footwear now what do i mean by this i mean sometimes it's okay to invest in a trend if it's high quality so i mean things like doc martin jadens they look like this i've had mine since 2020 i got them i think in like august and i've worn them to death these are my most worn shoes by an absolute mile apart from like my everyday trainers and they just go with everything. I did a recent styling video which I'll link down below and I've got one coming soon but they're honestly just a classic. It's a nice chunky shoe, really easy to get hold of second hand and if someone's looked after them they last for decades. So same as with everything I recommend having a look there but equally if you want to get a pair I think they are just a dream. Will give you a tip though, I've never had these hurt apart from one time when I wore tights inside socks because I think the friction was rubbing. But if you get the double dock socks, which I'll leave linked, they're basically specific socks sold by Doc Martin. They're £10, they're a little bit spenny but so worth it. And they're basically socks that have like extra padding and double lined on all the areas that could rub. Game changing genuinely game changing for the first year of having these i wore those socks every single time i wore them i know there's like sanitary towel tricks and stuff but genuinely these socks changed my life and i've still got them now if i'm doing a lot of walking one day i put them on but honestly game changing they've never hurt me and now they're quite molded to my feet really comfortable and i just i've never had pain i know a lot of people say doc martin's hurt these didn't. My sandals, however, they hurt a little bit because you can't really wear socks with them. But they, I've had those for, I think, about three or four years too and equally obsessed and love them. They're just really chunky, like, bad boy shoes. <laughs> then on the high quality footwear train, we're going for Ugg boots. Uggs, again, have been around for years. One of my best friends has had her Uggs for literally, like, ten years at this point and they're still going strong. If you look after them, if you protect them with the right stuff, I would advise having a Google for what that is. But if you protect them and look after them, they stay really well. Don't wear them in the rain and the snow, obviously, that's going to ruin them. But they do last for ages. I have a black pair. I've got a chestnut pair. And I have a brown pair, which is actually a slightly different brand, but my mum got them in Australia a few years ago. Um, they're just great. They're so comfy. There's obviously many different styles, depending on your style preference. I have the Ultras, and I have one pair of Minis. Again, I've done styling videos on these, but I think, depending on how you like them, you might like the Ultra Low, you might like the ones that are just kind of mini, you might like the slightly taller ones, you might like the Taz ones that are just like slippers. I just think they're a great quality shoe. And they just come back year after year. I think anything that people have had to invest in, as a trend i think just does keep coming back because it's one of those things where once we've invested you kind of want to keep wearing it it's the same as anything i think like i've got certain items in my wardrobe like my gucci boots they're not necessarily a trend piece i wear them quite a lot because i know that those boots cost me a fortune and obviously i want to wear them because they cost me a fortune likewise with things like this i think that once you've invested in them you just wear them to death and that's totally how they're meant to be and then the last one is more of a summer shoe the uggs are obviously a little bit more wintry autumny springy these are more a spring summer maybe into a bit of autumn and it's the Birkenstock Bostons. Now I initially didn't know if I'd love these. 
I absolutely love these. I've got the vegan leather khaki ones. I do really want the black suede and I want the camely suede because I just think they'll go really well into my wardrobe. However, I do absolutely love them. So comfortable. I have the Arizona ones, you know, the ones with like the strap over that are like sandals. I wear them to death in the summer, but I equally wear these. These are more of my like, if I'm slightly more dressed, whereas the other ones are more of my like, casual shoe but then i do really wear them in the same outfits to be fair so i guess not but again a really worthwhile investment super comfortable i have had mine for absolutely ages i think i've had my black arizona ones since maybe 2014 or 15 so they've lasted me a really long time and i just think if you look after them they last really well i wear them every single day in summer and like these ones i think i wore most of last summer and they still look really good condition i also really like wearing them with socks into autumn but that's it for today's video guys i really hope you enjoyed hearing some of my timeless trends that i think will be around for a really long time and ones that i'm glad that i invested into let me know in the comments if it's any trends that you've bought into that you may be considered to be timeless too we'll share the love there's probably so many more these are just what i could think of off the top of my head um, like I said, all the links and stuff will be down below along with all of the ways to style uh, that I've done so far. So looking at the floor, because everything is currently on the floor, I know for a fact there's at least five or six ways to style videos just from this alone, like this collection. So I'll leave those linked, but I do do them quite often along with capsule wardrobes and things like that if you're interested. But if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more from me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.